Well, howdy, everybody, and would you take a look at this? It's our 71st episode of Friday Three Clips, and I'm just so happy that you stopped by. Now, if this is your first time here, take a moment to subscribe, and yes, you will feel that tingly joy that everyone raves about when they do hit that sub button. And by the way, it is required. Now, Friday Fruit Clips, what is it? Well, it's my award-winning, cutting-edge, critically acclaimed weekly YouTube series where I expose the false prophets and the false teachers. And for the haters out there, yes, just so many awards. Wow. What is Friday Fruit Clips? Well, this series exists because we want brothers and sisters who are caught up in the delusion of following these false prophets to come back to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we shine a light on the silliness that's out there. And so let's take a look at our banner scripture, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them course that means to expose them that's what we're gonna do here today now throughout the video you're gonna see some pretty fruity things which actually well it may make you laugh a little bit and I just want you to know that it's okay to laugh sometimes you have to or you just might find that you're going a little bit crazy so if you're ready I've got some pretty good clips picked out Go ahead and grab some milk duds and a cold pop, and let's kick the door down and start this episode. You ready? All right, let's do it. All right, so first up, we've got Prophet Lobi Elias. There he is, looking very Milly Vanilli. Yes, you know it's true. You might recognize him. He is one half of the prophetic Milly Vanilli the other half being Passion Java. But today, Lovey is going to tell us about his supernatural encounters. Yes, to even include his visit to heaven. Okay. But also look at the title, How to Activate Your Angels. Because you know they need to be activated. And make them work for you any time. So let's go ahead and roll that first clip and see what we got. Listen, I've been to a place in heaven. I've, I don't like talking about these things a lot because there's a book one day I will release. I don't know when. I went to a place called the library. I've spoken to this about to my family many times. I've spoken to my mom. I went to a place called the library. And I saw activities in heaven. I was shocked. The place was so huge. And, it, and I, I don't have words to describe it. But you saw angels going in and out. And they were reporting to one main angel who was... You know, it was it was different leaders in there that these guys were coming to report, and everything is so orderly. I remember the Lord Jesus walking with me in this place, and this is the funny thing. He showed me something, and he told me, don't tell anybody about this. No, I'm telling you the truth. He told me, you see this and this and this, and I was so amazed. And he told me, this one, don't tell anybody about this. is for you to know. When I came back, when my spirit was brought back, I was so excited about what I saw. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I was so excited about what I saw. <sighs> Whoever was there, I went to that. You won't believe where I was. The moment I was about to say, they erased it from my memory. All I know is I was told something. I can't <laughs> wow, that sounds absolutely amazing. And I believe every word, don't you? And certainly the audience definitely drinks it all in. They believe that this is real. So Lovi is up there on stage with his Milli Vanilli outfit. And he's just testifying that, well, me and Jesus were just walking in the library in heaven. Just, just chilling, you know, because that's what we do. Jesus and me in heaven. Not you. You can't go to heaven because, well, you're not me. Uh, but uh, we're doing important heaven stuff. He's showing me stuff, and he even, according to love, he showed him a secret thing. Don't tell anyone, he says, Jesus said, because it's very private, and I only show those who are the most important, and that's you, Lovey. So, Lovey says he came back, I'm sorry, he came back to earth very excited, 
Seems like he was about to spill the beans on what he saw when bloop! Heaven had to bring that to a halt, and they just deleted that memory. That makes sense, absolutely. And again, the audience gasps, not in disbelief. They gasp in belief. They think this is real. Now, here's the other part of that that's so silly. Whenever you hear somebody testify that, well, we, you know, me and Jesus were hanging out, there's never any reverence, is there? There's no fear of God. They don't fear the absolute holiness of God. They're not collapsing, feeling like they're going to die, because those are actual biblical accounts of those who came into the presence of God. No, nope. these days, it's just as though, you know, Jesus was just your next door neighbor, just hanging out and doing stuff. And so that's a real sign that this is an absolute lie. Just so silly. But uh, Lobby has more, so let's continue. You need the angels of God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I drive and I'll look on the side, I will see them. It's like they're, move, they are, they are, they are moving, but they're not moving. They're right there. Right there. Sometimes inside the car, sometimes outside the car, but you cannot outspeed them. There are times I want to leave the house, they'll say, don't leave the house. I know not to argue, I'll stay home. Now it's good to go. I don't go. If you go, use this way, don't use that way. Something is on that side, go this way. All right, friends, this is ridiculous. Uh, again, Lobi testifying of things we cannot verify to include angels giving him instructions on whether he should even go out or not. Don't go out today. There's danger. Okay, I'll stay home. Or don't go down 7th Street. There's what? Demons down there? They're going to, I don't know. This is so silly. And again, people think, wow, Lobi is such a holy man of God hanging out with Jesus and angels on a regular basis. And you know what, guys? There's such danger in this teaching. And make no mistake, this is a teaching. He's teaching his parishioners and his followers to become paranoid. Listen to the voices in your head. They might be telling you not to go outside. And it works. People will lock themselves in the house because, well, let Lobi warned us, you know, don't go to the grocery store. Don't go to your son's football game. Where does it end? People are going to start hearing voices. And it's all because, well, Lovi hears these type of instructions. I want to hear these too. And the reason is because they worship Lovi. So they want to be just like him. So they're going to mimic his actions, thinking that, well, yeah, I'm hearing from angels too. When it's really just paranoid. They're letting demons in. So this man is teaching people how to let demons in. This man is very dangerous. Oh, and, and let me do a quick check. Has anyone heard the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached here? No, of course not. Just silliness. But we got to move on to the next clip. Sometimes I drive, I always tell, I always tell, um, uh, I've told that to, I believe, Chaz, I've told that to a few people that are close to me. If you're driving and you see, uh, or on the highway or whatever, you see a dog or an animal crossing, or run through it. Many of it is demons. They are there to make you panic, to make you swerve and die. That's why you find that accidents happen in the same spot over and over and over. There is a spirit that is there. All right, so talk about dangerous. Lobi just told everyone there and online that if you see a dog or a cat or a squirrel or a deer in the road, well, just go ahead and run through it. Run through it with your car. It's probably a demon, he says. Now, he didn't say hit the brakes. He didn't say slow down. He didn't say try to maneuver your vehicle's position. No, he just says run right through it. My goodness, talk about reckless. This man is going to get people injured or unalived. And yes, I say that word purposefully because of algorithms. It's really astonishing what we just heard. People worship this man, this idol. He's an idol to these people that now they've been taught to outright murder animals with your car when you're driving, not to mention, you know, putting the driver or any passengers in utter danger as well. Just get reckless and run it over. It's probably a demon. That's absolutely crazy. So, Lobi Elias, ladies and gentlemen, that's the last clip. What can I say? This is atrocious.
again, missing the gospel. How is this getting anybody saved? All this guy does is exalt himself, and it's just a tragedy. So much waste here. Continue to mark and avoid this man. And let's go ahead and move on to our next segment. All right, so next up, I'm going to show you a clip from Leave It to Beaver. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. My bad. It's uh, notorious internet false prophet Troy Black, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Yes, absolutely. And this is going to be a quick segment, just one clip. But that one clip is so inherently bad that I just had to grab it and document it. So let's give it a listen, and I'll see you on the other side. This is what I saw, y'all, right after that. I saw this vision from the Holy Spirit of uh, Baloo. So it's like that big bear, you know, from the Jungle Book uh, um, story, right? And, and uh, <clears throat> this is what I heard. I heard the Lord say, get back to the basics, the bare necessities. You know, there's a level of childish gullibility here that is really inconceivable. The unholy insult here gets very sharp. And it's brutal to anyone who even has one brain cell left working in their head. If any listener of this child thinks that our Holy Spirit, our Holy God, is using a Disney movie cartoon to convey wisdom or knowledge or the Word of God in order to instruct followers of Jesus Christ, you need help. This is crazy. This is blasphemy. I don't know how Troy Black can sleep at night doing what he does. But he's got five, look at that, 500,000 subscribers who are listening to him as he shipwrecks faith worldwide. Such an insult. The fact that none of his followers feel compelled to even react to that cartoon insult aimed at our God is really, you know, a testimony to their walk. They're lost. They have to be lost. Who can hear this and not be offended? I mean, a, a true follower of Christ. But that's Troy Black, ladies and gentlemen. And so, like I said, a short segment. Continue to mark and avoid this man. And we will move on to segment number three. All right, so I'm going to sneak in a bonus clip here. Look at this channel, Observation Station. Uh, this is a good channel. She does great work and exposes false prophets and false teachers as well. And so certainly go subscribe to Observation Station. And I'm going to show you one of her clips that she did because when I saw it, I couldn't believe it was real. Now, Observation Station has spruced it up with some pretty good uh, graphics. But I'm going to play this. This is Kate Nash that she's playing. And uh, you can see through it, this is really real. Kate Nash, of course, uh, proclaims to be an actual prophet of God. But let's go ahead and watch this clip. And Holy Ghost. God, we welcome in the new year. Mm. Mm. Holy Ghost, we welcome in the new year. Mm. Hallelujah. He just keeps. Mm. Mm. Pumpkins all over the place. Because listen. Now, I've seen. I've seen some crazy potato stuff in my life, but this one made me laugh out loud for at least three straight minutes. I'm not kidding. I actually had to watch it back a couple of times because I thought it was so, you know, one flew over the cuckoo's nest type thing. There's no way it could be real. I thought maybe, is this AI? What's going on here? But it's real. So outstanding work, Observation Station, for catching this. And good job, sister. Keep doing great work. And uh, folks, go over and subscribe today. Here she is, Observation Station. And with that, we will move on. All right, so next up, we've got, uh, I'm, I mean, Prophetess Sharon Stone, everyone. Now, Sharon Stone has been featured previously on Friday Through Clips. And today, we're going to be listening to a couple of clips from a recent video. And she's going to, of course, continue to do what false prophets do. And we're going to point those things out because we want to stand in opposition to these charlatans. And so let's watch the first clip and we'll comment after. Roll it, Becky. And so the Lord says, son, I'm pouring out my anointing. I'm pouring out, says the Lord, my grace. 
and I'm going to restore, and I'm going to put together pieces, says the Lord, things that you did not believe was possible. But I felt like what the Spirit of God was going to do for you was this. The Lord says, you have felt like you're on plan B, and you have missed plan A. And the Lord says, son, I am showing you, you are still on plan A, says the Lord. And the Lord says, son, I'm not withholding any good thing from you, for I am working on your behalf. And I also felt like that the, and it, I'm not saying anything negative about your parents. And it, I'm not saying anything negative about your parents. All right, so did you catch that? Now go ahead and play it back if you need to hear it again. But Sharon made a little boo-boo in her fake prophecy where she gives it away that certainly this is not God speaking. She says to the, to the, uh, the person that she's prophesying to, now, I'm not saying anything negative about your parents. She said, I'm, I'm. Why would she say I'm? All right. Do you think God said that? No, that was her. And so why would she interject that in the middle of God's alleged word? Well, it's because God is not speaking this fake prophecy. Sharon is. So, friends, these frauds will let you know that they're fake if you just listen. And with that, let's roll the next clip. And they're creating a tipping point. Do you realize they're creating a tipping point, a million people crying out. I don't trust any prophet that would tell me what the election results in the United States are right now because I believe that what they're doing is probably subject to change them. Did you hear that? All right, so this is very telling. I want to be fair for context of what she's talking about. Uh, she's talking about an upcoming million woman march on Washington, D.C., and that somehow they're going to have maybe affect the outcome of the election. But regardless of what kind of context is here, she's stating that she wouldn't trust prophecy, no matter how you look at it. So what she's doing, in essence, is telling you she doesn't believe her own racket. She's telling you she's a grifter. Prophecy, if it comes from God, should be true. God knows the beginning from the end. So prophecy is prophecy, period, right? But she's telling you she doesn't believe that. And she's telling you, quite frankly, publicly, that she wouldn't trust any of her comrades uh, with their prophecies, which they should feel insulted because you know how these internet prophets all have feelings. They don't like being called out, particularly by one of their own, and that's what she's doing. Anyway, let's listen to one more clip. Thank you for allowing me to share that. You know, as a, a true mama prophet, I am always looking for that, which is going to represent God in the best and the highest way. All right, so I wanted to add this clip because, again, it's very telling. I'm going to put up here what she said. I'm always looking for that, which is going to represent God in the best and the highest way. Friends, do you know what that is? that represents God in the best and the highest way? Yeah, it's the Bible. And so what do you mean, Sharon, that you're looking for that? You should already have that if you were truly of God. But you add false prophecy to your fake ministry, and so we know that you're a liar. You're not looking for the Bible. You're looking for something else. All right. right, let's. Uh, I think I may have said this was the last clip, but I've got one more, so let's roll that last one. I just met this gentleman tonight and help me. Is it Terry? Terry. If you could stand up, he's a pastor from uh, Norway. Stretch your hands in his direction. I don't know anything about him. I think we have a mutual friend. But um, uh, other than that, listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. You're in a time of reset yourself, says the Lord. The Lord says you're changing your covering. You're changing your relationship, says the Lord. And the Lord says it's not a negative. It's not even a time of loss. For the Lord says there are some things that are not done by membership or tithes. They're done simply out of relationship and alignment, those that choose to journey with one another. And so you are in the process of weeding through a lot of those things right now. And the Spirit of God says, son, this has been a painful season for you, but the fruit of this season is going to be great, says the Lord. So I wanted to play this clip so that you could witness what we're seeing here. Whenever these fraudulent prophets, whenever they prophesy personal prophecies, you know, right there in the sanctuary, it's never, ever, ever bad. In fact, it's always good. It's always good, smooth prophecies, always 100%. In fact, I challenge anyone who doubts me, 
see if you could find a situation like this, like an online video, where the alleged prophet prophesies something horrendous or something fearful. You won't find it. I would be shocked if you could find it. So, and, and, and again, this is a legitimate challenge. Send me the link. I'd love to see it. Now, of course, I'm not talking about when these alleged prophets prophesy against their political enemies, you know, the Democrats, so on and so forth. But when they do personal prophecies in the sanctuary, it's always good, 100%. It's always smooth. You know, the Lord sees your struggle and he's rewarding you. And this is the season of recovery or fruitfulness or blessings or growth or, you know, the suddenlies are here. And it's always like that. So I just want to always point this out because that's how they get paid by, by, by prophesying smooth things. So let's take a look at something here. In the book of Romans, chapter 16, we can scroll down, start in verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. That's what we're seeing. Even in the book of Isaiah in chapter 30, let's go to verse 9, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Verse 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. And folks, that is exactly what's happening even today. And so with that, we're going to wrap up this segment with Prophetess Sharon Stone. Continue to mark and avoid her, and let's move on to our final segment. All right, so our final clip, we're going to be looking at Kat Kerr. And I do want to give a shout out to Carla. You can see at the bottom left corner, there's her channel. Certainly go and subscribe to her. I'm going to leave her link as well as Observation Station's link in the description so you can find it to go subscribe to both their channels. So I saw this clip of Kat Kerr on her channel first. And after watching what you're about to watch, I think, like me, you may also be getting more and more concerned for Kat Kerr. Some of the claims that she's about to make are certainly bordering absolute crazy town. Or some may think that grandma's just off her meds. Because this is unhinged. And I'm being serious, by the way. Where is this woman's family? So let's just go ahead and roll that clip. So this Trump I'm wearing was made by Trump for me. 20 minutes before he was shot, he texted me from the platform. As one of the prophets he trusts. Is there anything else I need to know to share with the people? He meant from God. I said, well, God has something to say. What does he want to say? He said to you, no matter what happens this night, do not be afraid. Fear not, for I have your back. And you will not die. These are the very words I gave him from God. Come on, Holy Ghost. So never surrender. Never back up. Never quit going forward because you will be successful for what you want to do because I'm the one who put you there, anointed you, appointed you, timed your birth on this earth because you love America. You know who I am and you believe me. And that was the word he had me give him 20 minutes later. That's why when he was shot on the platform, he gets up and he goes, fight, fight, fight. He isn't fighting just for me. He's fighting for everybody in this room, and he is not afraid. Therefore, because I said fear not, he made this shirt for me right here. What does it say? It says fear not. Where do these people come from? Where do they come from? All his texts, he started saying, he would say, fear not, I am Donald J. Trump, and I will make America great again. All right, so, yes, this is very concerning. Uh, Kat's not looking well. Here she says that uh, Donald Trump is apparently making shirts for her. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh because this is delusion. I just simply can't believe that they're giving her a stage and a microphone to do this. She says that, well, he's texting her. And again, this is with zero evidence. Well, Donald, hey, everyone, Donald texted me this morning. 
because I'm his prophet, apparently. And of course, Donald's asking her, well, does this guy have a word for me? You know, Kat's like, of course. So she's giving him words. And again, this is bananas. This is all delusion. Um, reminding you, of course, there's grown adults sitting in the audience, clapping and enabling her, who is clearly mentally disturbed. And let's just say it one more time, friends. Where is her family? It's just atrocious that they let this type of thing happen. Uh, and, you know, just for the record, again, this this is not an attack on Trump. Uh, my job is to expose these false prophets, these Internet false prophets, and every one of those who have turned Donald Trump into an idol and gotten others to take the glory that belongs only to Jesus Christ and place it on a man. I love Jesus Christ. He alone is worthy of all glory, and you should believe that too. The false prophets, they stole that glory, and they preach a false doctrine. It's sickening. So there you go. Certainly pray for this woman, uh, but do not listen to her crazy janglings. If they're crazy, she looks like an absolute... I, I, I'm trying not to be mean. She's all kinds of crazy town. That's the best, that's the nicest thing I can say. Uh, she needs to repent, though, because she's done a lot of damage throughout her fake ministry, throughout her life. These people, they think that they're hearing the truth. It's uh, it's just so sad. In any case, uh, Mark and avoid her. We're going to wrap things up here. All right, folks, well, that's going to conclude things for this 71st episode of Friday Fruit Clips. And again, thanks for watching. As always, I would ask that you would pray for those who are caught up in the delusion of following these false prophets and these false teachers. Pray that they would come back to the truth and the sober-mindedness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, pray for the false prophets. Pray for the false teachers, that they would shut down their fake ministries, that they would stop deceiving people and repent. And if you do want to support uh, this ministry financially, you certainly can. Write down in the description below, there's a couple of different ways, including becoming a Patreon. Help us to continue to get the word out, to expose these charlatans, and to even show up on location to protest them. And I thank you. So, the staff's at the door. They are anxious to get out of here. We're all headed up to a fish fry in Door County. It's supposed to be a pretty fresh catch, so we're excited about that. So I'm gonna hit the lights, set the alarm, and as always, leave you with this advice. Remember to stay fruity. All right, you guys, God bless you so much. And again, thank you. We'll see you next week. Watch this.
Enough is enough. 